Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. In this episode, we're going to take a look at as how to use Lightroom to export your photos to iPhoto. You're probably wondering, well, why would I ever want to do that? Well, here's the thing. I use Lightroom practically every day to manage photos, to import photos, to export them out for email and all kinds of different purposes. But I use Apple gadgets too. I'm an iPhone user. I have an Apple TV. So sometimes I want to get those photos, my best pictures, my best ones from Lightroom onto my iPhone or my iPod or my Apple TV. And one of the best ways to do that is to simply sync them from iPhoto. Now again, I don't, I don't manage pictures in iPhoto. I don't really use iPhoto for anything other than what it's good for, which is syncing to Apple devices. So since I do use Lightroom, I wanted a way that was as streamlined and as easy as possible. Sure, we could export to a folder, and you could even sync that folder um, using iTunes to an Apple device. But again, I wanted the ability not only to just sync a folder of images, but to have albums and be able to have those albums on my Apple devices. And again, iPhoto is a good use for that. And since it's included with your computer, if you bought a Mac, then you're all set. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the best way not to just go to a folder, but to go directly to iPhoto. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm in Lightroom, and these are some photos uh, you probably have seen me show before in, in my Lightroom presentations. But these are some of the ones I've took taken uh, in San Francisco. And I've got some nice ones here that I really would love to have on my iPhone. Now, also, I'm just going to toggle over to uh, iPhoto. Just to prove the point, we have a brand new iPhoto library. I've never even imported pictures into this um, into this copy of iPhoto on this user. So it's empty. There's no pictures in it. So if we go back to Lightroom, let, first thing we need to do is select the ones we want. So I'm just going to pick a couple here. I'm going to select this one, this one. Oh, I love the sky in that one. I didn't even realize I had that one left over. And we'll pick, um, we'll pick the church as well. All right, so we got those three shots. Now, again, I'd love to have those on my Apple TV, my iPhone, and my other devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the File menu, and I'm going to come down to Export. And when I go to Export, well, it remembers the last stuff that I set up. And so I'm going to go ahead now, and we're going to create a new preset, by the way, when we're done, so we never have to remember these settings or do it again. So the first thing I want is to put the images in a particular folder, temporarily long enough for them to go into iPhoto. So I'm going to choose that folder, and actually I'm just going to use my uh, pictures folder. That's a good place to put pictures. So, you know, whether you're a Mac or PC, you'll have a pictures folder. And in that pictures folder, I want to put them in a subfolder called for iPhoto. So that will um, allow me to uh, you know, put them in a folder that I can easily recognize. And by the way, once they're in iPhoto, I don't need them in that folder anymore. So it'll allow me to also go in and quickly delete them. Now, I could use the file name. I can create a custom file name. I can use a custom name and sequence. So I'll use a custom name and sequence, and we'll just call this uh, San Fran. That's where I was. All right, so I'll just number those one through whatever. And now, for my, I want them as JPEGs. And quality, well, I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to keep it right around the 50 to 60, um, 60 uh, quality setting. And then the color space and sizing. This is where it becomes important. So I'm going to use the pixels for my sizing. And here's the thing. If you have pictures on an iPhone or Apple TV, I'm sorry, iPhone or iPod, well, those screens are pretty small. So you don't really need a huge picture. But if you're going to take those pictures out to something like an Apple TV on your big HD screen, well, now you need to think about the resolution. And since um, 1080p or you know high, high def is 1920 by 10, 1080, well, then that means your pictures don't need to be any wider or taller than 1920. So we'll use that as our basis. So I'll set this to 1920 for the width and height. In other words, don't make them any bigger than that because it's wasted space at that point. And also, since we're just showing them on screen, they don't need to be any bigger than 72 pixels per inch. I don't want to add my uh, watermark on these. And now, here's the next big thing, all the way here at the bottom. 
what to do after they export. Well, right now it's just going to show them to me in the operating system. That's what I don't want to happen. I don't care about seeing them there. I want them in iPhoto. So I'm going to pop down this, um, this pop-up menu. And I don't want to do any of these things. What I want to do is go to my Export Actions folder now. In other words, take me to the Actions folder that Lightroom uses to um, be able to pick programs or folders or actions to be able to do things to once the images are exported. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that Export Actions folder. And in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to use Apple's Mail to mail your images directly from uh, Lightroom. So we're going to, if you haven't guessed, we're going to put an alias or a shortcut or pointer to iPhoto. So I'm going to first tell the operating system to show me iPhoto in the finder. Show me the actual application. And it brought it up in a folder over here, I guess. This window's hanging out over here. So there's the actual iPhoto application. Now what you don't want to do is drag it over because then you're moving it. I don't want to move it. I just want to make an alias of it. And so the keys to hold down to make an alias are Option, Command. And since we're since this is a Mac thing, we're using the Mac keyboard shortcuts. So that'd be Option, Command. And that will just put an alias to iPhoto, leaving iPhoto in the original Applications folder. So I'm not moving it, I'm just creating an alias. And one way you can tell it's an alias is because it's got that little arrow pointing up on it. So that lets you know we just made an alias, we did not move it. Okay, so now I can close the Applications folder. I can close the Export Actions folder if I want, but I'm just going to go back to the Export Actions, and it will recognize what you put in that folder instantly. So I can say, go ahead and just, whenever you're done exporting how many ever images I select, go ahead and send them right over to iPhoto. That's the cool trick, is that it will do it for you automatically. So this Export Action is pretty well set. So now we're just going to go ahead and add it in. So we don't have to remember these things or set them up again. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this one in. And we'll put it in the user presets. And we will say this is an export for iPhoto. We'll create. And we're all set. So now if I just say export, or I can cancel and run it from the menu. But if I, since it's all set and ready to go, if I say export right now, what it will do is export those three images to a folder first. But then it will take them right into iPhoto for me. And there they are. It bounced me over iPhoto. It brought in those three pictures for me. I can now put, I can now create an album. Um, we'll call this one San Fran as well. And when we create that, it'll create the album. We'll go to our last import. We can take those three images and drag them right into that album. Now when we go to iTunes, and we, you know, sync our iPods or Apple TVs or whatever those devices are, that new San Fran album will show up as a choice to sync with. So you can create as many albums as you want, and that's what that's the beauty of it is that then you'll have your pictures, your best pictures, organized by the albums you need to go onto those Apple devices. And again, you don't have to stop using Lightroom. Use Lightroom for everything Lightroom's you know powerful for but only take your best shots over to iPhoto or to your Apple devices so that you can show them off. No sense importing them all because you don't want to show them all. You only want to show the best ones, the edits, the ones that you did your changes to, the ones that you really want to show off in slideshows or on your devices. So that's how we can use Lightroom for everyday use, but when we need to take our best work over to an Apple device, Apple TV, iPod, iPhone, whatever, then we just use iPhoto using this new export we set up. Now the next time I need to take a photo over, let's say I forgot one, this uh, picture of Coit Tower, which I really like, I can now just go up to the File menu, choose Export with Preset, because we've saved that one, and there it is, for iPhoto. Now when we let go, it'll uh, tell me that I don't have a unique name. Uh, that's okay, I can overwrite this one anyway. Um, because it's just putting them in a temporary folder and there it is there is my new picture of Coit Tower which I can now drag into that San Fran uh, album and now I'll have all four pictures there so that is how this works from now on so pretty cool I love this kind of integration from Lightroom directly out to whatever we needed to go to and I don't I don't have to do anything different than what I've always done 
use Lightroom for everything I use it for, and export only what I need to go over to iPhoto. That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.